Hi students, so we are going to begin with 4.1 and this is something that you've seen in pre-algebra. I'm just going to do a refresher again. So we're going to be plotting points in a coordinate plane. So here from the book, because um, sometimes the things in the book show the best pictures rather than me having to draw it out again, it shows a coordinate plane. All right, so if you remember, it has two major axes. The first one is the x-axis, which always goes from left to right here. And then up and down is the y-axis, which goes up and down. So just remember that. Those are the two major axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. And here, right in the center, so I've highlighted it here so you can see real clear, is the center point, which is always an x of 0 and a y of 0. And we call this the origin. So a lot of times they just refer to it as the origin. Also, on this graph, you see that it has four quadrants. So I'm just basically going to go through it and refresh your memory. Quadrant 1. Well, if I'm going to plot in quadrant 1, you always do x first and then y. So this is always the x, then the y. So you can see that x is a positive, And if I go up here, I can see that the y's over here are positive. So anything in the first quadrant is going to have an x that's positive and a y that's positive. Then I move over here to the second quadrant. And I can see that if I move, because I always go in the x direction first, if I move, my x's are negative 2, negative 3. They're going to be negative x's. And then if I move up, my y's are going to be positive. You can see the y's are 1, 2, 3. That's how you can tell um, which quadrant you're plotting in and whether the x's or y's are negative or positive. Look at the x and y axis. So anything in the second quadrant is a negative x and a positive y. Now if I go to my third quadrant and I'm going here starting at the origin and I'm plotting points, well my x's as I move along here are negative. Then as I move down my y's are negative. So any coordinate point in the third quadrant is going to have a negative x and a negative y. Okay? Then the last quadrant is the fourth quadrant. So now we look here. So if I start at the origin, that's where you always begin your uh, pen or pencil, whatever you're using, and you begin to plot. So I go along the x's are positive, but then I go down and the y's are negative. So there, x is positive and y is negative. So that is a refresher on the coordinate plane so we can start plotting points. Okay, so from here I'm going to go ahead and I've made up some points here on a graphing paper. Okay, so we're going to say we know that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and just to save time Everything here is a 10 by 10. So here is 0, even though it's not marked. This is 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10 this way. Then from 0, when I go up, I have 10 all the way up to the top of the y-axis. Then from here, I go 0, negative 1, negative 2, all the way down to negative 10. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this to remind you. So this is a positive 10. If I go up here, this is 10. If I go to the left from here to here, here is going to be negative 10. And then conversely too, if I go from 0 down, um, we're going down a number line. So this would be negative 10 at the bottom. Okay, so that's how I want you to think about it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through. So again, this is a refresher. It should come back to your memory. I've plotted some points just randomly, and we're going to do it in alphabetical order, but we're going to write the ordered pairs for it. So we're going to start in alphabetical order. We're going to start with A. So you should know A is in the second quadrant. That means the X will be negative and the Y will be positive. But let's go ahead and count. So you always start at the origin, and I'm going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, so I'm going to say A here, do the 
parentheses because that's how we write order pair and then do your little comma. Do everything the way I do it because that's how you write in mathematical language. You have to put a parentheses around it, okay? So x is negative 5 and then from there we're going to count up where y is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 5, 6 would be the coordinate where we find a. All right? And you always put the parentheses around and a little comma there. So we're not going to do them all. We'll just do some of them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump to b. So I can see that b is in the fourth quadrant. Okay? So we should know then that x will be positive and y will be negative. So let's go ahead and start at 0, 0. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 5 in the x direction. And then down 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So I'm going to put b is 5, comma, negative 4. And that is the ordered pair for b. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to give you a second looking at this. Go ahead and see if you can figure out what c is. Okay, so I've given you a second. Hopefully you get this right. Let's do it together. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is in the x direction, six, and in the y direction, one, two, three. So I would write it as six comma three. So if I'm reading that, I know it's six to the right and up three. It's in the first quadrant. So here are two, D and F, that are a little bit different. They're not in a quadrant. They're on an axis. Hopefully you see this. So you can see that D is on the y-axis and F is on the x-axis. So let's go ahead and go ahead and get the coordinates for D. All right. So if I'm looking at D and I'm starting at 0, I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. Okay, so I've gone down negative 5 in the y. Sorry, so this is going to be 0. I did not move in the x direction and I moved down negative 5 in the y. Okay, so in the x direction I did not move anything but I went down 5. Okay, so we would call that 0, negative 5. Now, f is going to be different. They can't both be the same. So on the y-axis, you have no movement in the x. So it's always going to start with a 0 and then some kind of number here. So obviously, the other way around is we're going to have, for the x-axis, we're going to have a number first, and then it's not going to move up and down. So let's look here. So this is along the x-axis, so it moves in the x-direction from here, 1, 2. So it moved 2 in the x-direction. Does it move up or down at all? No. So that means it's going to be 2, 0. So you can see that they're different. The first one on the y-axis was 0, negative 5. The other one, f, is 2, 0. Okay? So just for fun real quick, e... I'll give you a second, see if you can come up with the right coordinate pair for E. Okay, so you can see this is in the third quadrant, so you should recognize that both X and negative will be both Y's. So let's go ahead and count from here in the X direction. It moves 1, 2, 3, negative 4, and then down in the Y direction, negative 2. So we would call this negative 4, comma, negative 2. So those are all the ordered pairs. So hopefully this brings back to memory. The biggest ones sometimes that people have to practice is um, ones on the x and y axis and get used to that. But the rest of them I think are pretty straightforward. So now we are going to go ahead and move on to example three, where 
we are going to um, graph a function. So here I'm just going to make one up and I'm going to make a table and show you how they do it. So we're going to graph the function y equals 3x minus 1. Okay, so this is a function, it's a line. Okay, and they're going to give us the domain. So I'm going to write this down. The domain is going to be from negative 2 to negative 1 to 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so let me see. Hopefully we can see this a little bit. Squeeze it on here. There we go. Let's go up. Okay, there we go. We squeeze it in there. So this is the function y equals 3x minus 1. The domain is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are the only ones included. So I'm going to explain how we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to do a table. All right, so it's a simple table like this. And this is going to be my x values, which I'm going to put here. And then this is going to be the function y equals 3x minus 1. And over here on this is going to be my y value. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to write it in order as they've given it to us. x is negative 2, then it's negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I'm just filling this in. All right, so we have this function 3x minus 1. What do you think I'm going to do if x is negative 2? What do you think they want me to do to solve it and find out what y is? Hopefully you're thinking we're going to plug in the negative 2 to the function, and that's exactly what we're doing. So 3, so where this x is, x they want us to use is negative 2, so go ahead, it's like a PEMDAS, 3 times negative 2 minus 1, okay? So when you work that out, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 minus 1, so I'm going to write this here, this is negative 6 minus 1, I'm going to show the work here, so we're going to get negative 7, okay? All right. So that is the work, and over here I'm going to write the ordered pair. This is an ordered pair. When x is negative 2, then you should be able to see that y is going to be negative 7. Okay, let me try and squeeze that all in here. It's a little bit... Okay, here. All right, there. A little tight squeeze, but there we go. All right, so the next one they want us to plug in is negative 1. So we're going from the smallest number to the largest number. So 3 times negative 1. So I'm plugging it in for the, where this x is. They're telling me that the x value is negative 1, minus 1. So that's PEMDAS. And remember your order of operations. Parentheses, exponents first. Multiplication or division, whichever comes um, first you do that and then addition and subtraction is always the last thing you do so you're going to multiply 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 minus 1 so negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 so that means when my x is negative 1 my y is negative 4 so you get an ordered pair negative 1 negative 4 that's the second ordered pair on the function okay Zero is always great. Zero is an easy one to solve. So the next one we're going to plug in is zero. So three times zero minus one. What's anything times zero? Hopefully you remember that zero. So zero minus one is just going to be negative one. If I have zero and I subtract one, I get negative one. So the next ordered pair is zero comma negative one. Okay, we're going to do the same here. Plug in a 1. So now we're starting to have positive values. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. So when I have an x value of 1, I have a y value of 2. Okay? And the last um, number that they want us to plug in, so 
domain, if you've noticed, the domain is always the x value. So I'm going to write this over here. Okay, domain is the x values and range is the y values. So when they say that in algebra, domain and range, a domain is the x, range is the y. Okay, so the last one is a 2. So we're going to say 3 times 2 minus 1. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. So the last ordered pair is 2 comma 5. Okay, so look at that. You should be able to see how we plug this in. And now the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to use this graphing paper that we were using and I'm going to go ahead and graph this line. So I'm going to plot all the points that we just went ahead and found. Alright, so I'm going to move this off here. And I'm going to go ahead and we have it right here. All these points are right here. So I'm going to go ahead and read them off. Hopefully you have them in your notes. So you're looking. All right. So negative 2, negative 7. So negative 2 and then negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's my first point. The next one is negative 1, negative 4. So go over 1 and come down 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the next one is 0, negative 1. So if I'm at 0, I don't move in the x direction, but I go down in the y direction. Okay? And the last 2, the, la the second to last one is 1, 2. So from 0, go over 1 and up 2. And the very last coordinate point is 2, 5. So now I'm going to go over 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. So you see that we have a straight line. Now I don't have a ruler, but if I did, it would look a little better than that. That's all they want from those points to that. Since they don't want any more points than that, we stop right here and stop here. And there you have a part of a line. Okay? So that's the function that you just graphed. So you found they gave you the domain, the numbers to plug in. And then when you plug them in, you found the range, the y values. Okay, so the last example I'm going to do is a word problem. And I'm going to go ahead and put this from the book. It's easier to see them. We're just going to kind of follow along. Okay, so let's look at this. When it's a word problem, rather than me writing it out, I'm just going to follow along with the book. So always read what they're asking and if you have to underline anything that looks um, important and will help you so it says graph a function represented by a table so let's read it it's all about voting in 1920 the ratification of the 19th amendment to the united states constitution gave women the right to vote the table shows the number to the nearest million. So you've got to be careful, the table's in millions. Even if it has 27, it means 27 million, okay? So it's really important to read everything and understand. Of votes cast in the presidential election both before and since women were able to vote. So here, they've got the years before um, 1920. So the, here's zero starting at 1920, it tells you. So then four years before um, would be 1916, then eight years before the vote, um, and then 12 years before the vote. So that's how they did it. So this is four years after the vote, so that's going to be 1924. Eight years after will be 1928, and then 12 years after you add 12 to 1920. Okay, so 1932. So that's how it works. So we can see... Um, 15 million, 15 million, 19 million, then the first year 27, then 29, 37 million, and 40. So you can see it's increasing. Okay? So it says explain how you know the table represents a function. Okay? So this is a very important thing about a function. You're going to see this coming um, up a lot. 
oops, sorry, there we go. You're going to see this coming up a lot. A function is where every x has one y. So which one do you think is going to be the x's and which one do you think is going to be the y's? So the x is always the thing that comes first, okay? So the years here are going to be what the x values are. So we could say that's x. And then the votes are the y, okay? And that keeps increasing. So when I look at my x, I've got negative 12 and 15. Then I've got negative 8 and 15, negative 4 and 19, 0 and 27, 4 and 29, 8 and 37, and 12 and 40. So the biggest thing is to look at your y values, okay, and my x values. Every x goes to one y. There's no repeating x values. You don't see like two fours. You don't see 429 and 416. If you saw something like that, that would not be a function. But this is a function because every input, input is the x values, has one output. So yes, that's how you know it's a function, just looking. Then it says B, graph the function represented by the table. So they went ahead and graphed it. And if you're on a test too, you want a label. So the x-axis is going to be the years, okay? So um, 0 is going to be 1920. This will be 1924 and so forth. So you would say um, years before or since 1920. You'd label it. Um, better than they have. Then the y, the up and down, is how many votes? Again, you would write on the y here millions in votes. So you would need to label it a lot better than they have done here. So they're showing here they've plotted all the points and you can see that the first two years, those first four years apart here, that was 15 and 15. You can see it. Then it begins to increase to 19, to 27, to 29, to 37, to 40. So you can see the increase, okay? So, and just like I told you, they, they said what X and Y was. So there they graphed it. Then describe any trend in the number of votes cast. So we kind of went through that. You could see the first two years are the same, but overall you see that after they were allowed to vote, especially it began increasing a lot. So that is how you would graph and you would label and you would um, interpret the graph that you can see it's increasing, it's going up, okay, over the years. And that matches your table right here. Okay, guys, that's it for 4.1.